Hello, in this video we're going to talk about how spreadsheets and databases, which are two types of software, can be used to both process and also present data. And both will be evaluated too. Presenting data is really the focus point of LO6, which is our final objective for the exam. So, just as a very quick recap from the third learning objective, information is processed data. So we start with some data, some unprocessed well, information, some raw facts and figures, we add some meaning, add some context, add some structure, and maybe some coding, and produce some information. Data on its own is not necessarily useful. It becomes useful once we process it, once we get some information. In terms of our course, there are two main pieces of software which we can use to process data. They are spreadsheets and databases, not the only two pieces of software in the wider IT world, right? There are loads, but we're only looking at these two in this course. And software, if you don't know, are just been, are really the groups of instructions running on your computer. So the different programs which are open on a computer is what software is. We can't touch it. It's running inside of a computer. And the computer itself being the hardware, the physical stuff. So processing is not necessarily the main point of this objective. We've kind of looked at this before, but we are talking mostly about presenting it, which is really how we are sharing our information. So presenting information is about sharing it with other people. And this is important because you could have some really valuable or and or interesting information, but if it's presented in not a particularly appropriate way, the, in, the effect will be lost, right? So you might have a really, a really good idea or really interesting idea, but if you present it, if you share it in not a very good way, there's no point it being valuable or interesting. You might be able to think of examples of adverts which were annoying or put you off a product. Maybe you can think of books or articles you read which were so boring or badly written that actually you didn't really get anything from them. Really how we are presenting information is absolutely crucial. And in terms of presenting it, and for our course at least, there are five main types of software. So not just spreadsheets and databases, but also word processes, desktop publishing software, and presentation software as well. We'll look at the other three in the next video. We're going to focus on the first two today. So looking first at spreadsheets, and we're going to try and separate processing and presenting, which are two different functions of these pieces of software, but they often do overlap, it has to be said. So spreadsheets are mostly designed to store and process numerical data. Numerical meaning numbers, so integers, reals, fractions, decimals, etc. Mostly designed for numbers. They can store text as well, but they're not necessarily designed to do this. So in terms of the functionality and regarding processing in particular, they can be good at converting these numerical data types to more visual objects, object being a different data type, like graphs and charts. So this is Microsoft Excel, which is perhaps the best known spreadsheet software. We've got loads of numerical data here. We've got some co um, column headings, which are in text, mostly numbers, right? Which is mostly the purpose of a spreadsheet, but it's enabled us to convert it into a nice pie chart here, which would be considered an object. That is a processing step, right? We're going from one data type to another. Likewise, we can do other conversions like going from one currency to another, going from pounds to dollars to euros. It can be done inside the software and also from different numerical types like decimals to percentages. And the software makes it really easy. It's designed to convert between data types and that processing is done inside the software without us having to do too much. Another function which is relevant to processing is the fact that most spreadsheet software like Excel enable you to auto-complete certain processes. So the software will kind of learn what you're doing and enable some auto-completion. So this GIF here, if you look closely, so ignore the fact that it's a little bit um, dodgy, but it's, it's following the pattern of January and February, it's predicting what you're going to type next. This is auto-completion. In theory, it is speeding things up for us. And if you've done Excel yourself, you'll know there's often cases where you're doing very repetitive tasks and auto-complete can speed things up. But here, this example is good because, like I say, Excel or spreadsheets more generally are not very good at dealing with text. Here, it's dealing with month names and you can see it completely gets the pattern wrong because it's not designed to work with text. With numbers it can spot a pattern much more easily. But anyway, autocomplete is useful for processing. It's also good that there are many different calculations built in, especially mathematical ones. So here there's a huge list of different maths functionalities but also ones regarding date and time and other financial ones. There are ones for text 
but like I said, it's not its primary purpose. Having these built in, as in inside the software, is useful because we're not sat with a calculator doing it ourselves. And like autocomplete, most spreadsheet software, especially the paid versions, allow you to record what they call macros. So a macro is effectively some repeated task and you record it and every time you want to repeat that task, which may be often, you just run the macro and you don't have to do it yourself. That can speed up a lot of time because you're not constantly repeating yourself, the computer is doing it for you. Now let's look at how spreadsheets can be used to present information. Processing data is given us information and so we can now look to present it. And honestly here, the, the functionality is quite similar. They do overlap quite a lot because I've already mentioned how graphs and charts can be created from the tables, which usually have some numerical data type. This is done sort of automatically, right? So if we've got, say, a table here, which is a fairly is presented fairly nicely, it's not always this nice, we don't have to draw the graph ourselves. We just input the table to the functionality here and it will do the graph for us. So the little bar chart here is done for us. We're not measuring out the bar itself. We're not deciding the axes unless we want to. It's doing a lot of it automatically, which is obviously very helpful. And this graph is a lot more visually appealing than just a table on its own. Another useful tool built into most spreadsheet software is what if analysis. This is, as the name suggests, looking at what would happen under various different scenarios. So what if my profits went up? What if my staff sold more in a month? What if there was a thunderstorm which affected my sales? So looking at how the data would be affected under different scenarios, and this isn't done by hand, the spreadsheet software can help us do this. And the technical word for this is looking at projections. Projection being what would happen if this current trend was followed in the future. So for example, here we've got a little table of different assignments and different grades for the assignments. Now one's missing, and this person is using what if analysis to decide to figure out, say they want to get 70 in their final grade, they're currently on 65, they want to find out what they need to get in the third test to get 70 as their final grade. So what if I got 70, what would need to happen in my data? So it would come back with whatever value it is to allow them to get their final grade of 70. So really useful. It's it, Really this is processing, right? So if you're actual behind the scenes, is the spreadsheet processing it for you, but it can present different scenarios to the user. Okay, let's consider what is good and bad about spreadsheets then. So first of all, spreadsheets are good because they are quite versatile. They can be used to store, process, and present data. Not all software can be used to do all three. Spreadsheets can. It's also good because many tasks we've looked at can be automated. So graphs are created pretty much automatically. Macros are an automatic process. Autocomplete is automatic, so it saves us time. And also there are lots of tools built in for processing and presenting. It's designed with lots of different tools for doing what we're looking to do, right? So different mathematical operations, different types of graphs, a lot of stuff built into most spreadsheet software. However, they are mostly designed for numerical data. So if we're not dealing with numbers, we're dealing most with text and images and other types of data, they're not going to be as useful as they would be for numbers. I mean, images, you can't really do much of images in a spreadsheets, for example. Text you can do a bit with, but not a ton. And as you'll know, if you have tried to use spreadsheets, they do have quite a steep learning curve. They get quite tricky to use the more and more you try and do. So at, at the start, they're fairly simple. But the more you try and do, the harder it becomes. And you often do need some training. You can't just magically figure out how to do the more complex stuff. It does require some learning on your behalf.